our live story, halftime chat live stories. And today I'm going to have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Kale Beverly, the president and CEO, or the CEO and president of Beverly Boy Production, a video production company based out of Los Angeles and also operating out in Miami. And it's amazing how Kale has grown over the past, um, since I met him 20 years ago, when we worked together in um, at a company called Tech System. So we are going to look at his early life from town back in Chicago, look at how he transitioned from, moved from Chicago to Los Angeles, and what happened when the dot-com boom crashed and work and jobs just seemed to disappear and he had to reevaluate his life. So we're going to look at that journey. Also looking at the challenges of the field he works in. Um, working in entertainment has his challenges. And one of the things that I know about Kale is that he has a very strong faith and um, a very bold faith as well and um, it would be great to see how that faith has shaped him and supported him along the way. So I look forward to welcoming him on board and having our evening chat. There is the big man himself. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to call, I'm like, look at that, Mr. Beverly, he's becoming an, an African two minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's PP time, Jack. You know how we do it around here. Yeah. Good, PP good, good. Uh, I mean, see. before you joined in, I, I sort of introduced you as CEO and president of Belly Boys Production, based in right? Los Angeles, but also operating out to Miami. Um, it's been over 20 years that we first met out in the offices of Tech, tech System back in 2000, just before the dot-com boom crash, which sort of affected a lot of our jobs and stuff. But um, I'll, what we'll do today, it'll be good to get a, a journey back from growing up in Chicago, up your upbringing with your, with your brothers and your folks, how you moved out to LA, how you started up the business and stuff. And then I guess one of the things that, I, I, that I've known about you is, a man who's unashamed about his faith and very bold about that. And in the industry you're in, and from my own experience, I know that that could be a challenge. So we'll, that will be one of the areas that we'll sort of wrap up and stuff. But um, okay. yeah, I mean, hey, it'd, it'd be great to start off with uh, growing up in Sh uh, Chicago. What was that like? Okay. Uh, hey, is it okay if I uh, uh, put it on my uh, YouTube as well yeah, or my yeah. thing? Yeah, that's good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. I just want to make sure I get the permission from the man if we get <laughs> started. That's fine. All right. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> this may help get you some person as well. So, yeah. hey, you, you, you worldwide, you global. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Nam, it's an honor, first of all, man. I mean, I, you know, we just actually just touched base. Uh, it's been years, but we, we briefly touched base last week just to get everything set up for this week. Yeah. But it's an honor to see you and talk with you. And, uh, you know, you've been a blessing in my life. You've been a mentor to me um, years ago when, uh, you know, people were against me. You were the one that uh, kind of took me under your wing and, and uh, befriended me and, you know, helped, helped me learn the ropes because I wasn't I was new here to California. And you kind of even though you were, you know, you know, still new to California, I think yourself, but you had been here a little bit longer and uh, just even in the role as, in, in the position, I it was a promotion for me, and, yeah. and uh, you helped uh, kind of guide me and those kind of things. So you've always kind of been this this mentor to people and help guys. So I, I mean, it makes sense that you're still doing that even <laughs> to this day. So it's an honor to, to speak with you and uh, you know be a part of your your platform here. So I appreciate no. it. Um, still, about my close, background, I mean, and you're still close to my brothers too. So it's that's that's also we're still linking in, even though I'm not there. You you still looked after my little brother and his family when they came to visit in LA. So we're still connected as well. That's right. Oh yeah, we know the whole family. We met the mom, <laughs> pops, and your brother, and everybody, man. And you met my family, so we we're, we're family. You know, nothing wrong with that. 
And uh, yeah, Michi, that's my boy, man. Yo, we, we actually lived together for a few years, you know. After yeah. you left, I mean, you kind of, you kind of, I don't know if we're ready to get on that. And, yeah. and we all had to figure it out together over here. We're like, oh man, now we gone. We got to figure it all out. So, <laughs> big brother. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm from Chicago. You know, I'm a middle child of uh, two, uh, three boys. Um, my oldest brother's Marcus, youngest Tavares, and myself. And, you know, I've always been raised in the middle, a team player. I've always looked for, you know, support around around me and always to help, you know, be a team lead. So I was raised right by my parents. The parents are still alive and healthy, you know, dealing with their old age and stuff like that. But they raised us right. They brought us up in, in the favor of the Lord and preached us the word of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I learned at a young age the gospel that, that Jesus is God, you know that he was manifest in the flesh. He came unto his own, his own received or not, and he was seen by many witnesses. And uh, I believe that. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they, you know, we read the Bible as a family. Uh, we did a one-year Bible reading. Uh, that always stuck with me. It was a foundation that helped me go. You heading out? All right. Well, all right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, man. Yeah, right after the red zone. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And, uh, you know, just grounded us right. And uh, we le learned to uh, work hard. You know, first job was a paper route, you know. Uh, <laughs> my brothers and I would cut hair in our basement, you know. So we grew up on the south side of Chicago in the Beverly area, Beverly Hills. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Beverly's from Beverly. Not Beverly Hills, California, but, you know, <laughs> we're not, we weren't in the hood. I not either, so. But how is yeah, Chicago? Because I, I think we see we heard a lot about Chicago now about its its gang um, gang history, gang guns, and and being dangerous. But when you grew up, what was life like in the area that you lived in? Um, you yeah, know, it's community, family oriented. Um, you know, um, very nice. I mean, we uh, can't complain. Um, uh, my parents want to make certain we had a good found foundation. We've always lived in a home. We didn't live from place to place, you know. Um, grew up in the south side, knew, you know, knew, uh, you know, a lot of the people we grew, grew up with and went to the, you know, the best schools that we, in, at that time, you know. And, uh, you know, I can't complain about it, my upbringing, you know. You got to have a good foundation. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it helps to have a good foundation. So then that way it helps build the, the man you'll be or the, the adult woman, you know, whoever that applies, you know, will be when they're older. And so, yeah. so I mean, at, 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 at that time, were there lots of distractions? Because, you, you know, you talked about parents who were Bible fearing and, and, and teaching you the word. But where you where there's distractions from friends to, to try and pull you away because that's not as much as it, it might be second nature to you but i guess to friends in school it's like that might be strange like, Man, this guy is really serious with the bible or, or how was that like <laughs> yeah well i mean whenever you take a stance on anything in life you know you're going to have opposition so it doesn't matter what you make a stance on and so you know especially when you do a stance on you know, the Lord or the Bible, I mean, uh, you know, then you're going to have a natural opposition and then you're going to also have natural celebration of it. So I learned that as a young child, you know, I learned that, you know, that, and, you know, just being a, a black man, I mean, you, you can't walk around without, you know, I was just in the study the other day and you're getting called racist names. And a lot of people don't know it until they actually walk in that, in, 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 uh, in the footsteps or at least experience it or see it. Um, so, you, you know, so as a young, as a young person that you realize, oh, I have opposition regardless of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, they have preconceived ideas and notions about you before they even know you and they don't care to get to know you. And it's mm -hmm. only be out of ignorance. And you learn that at first, it, you know, when you're young, it hurts. You know? But when you're older and you're more mature, you realize, you know what? I feel sorry for that person because they don't know. And, um, and um, you know, they're just less intelligent and, and it just comes out of ignorance. And that's all it is. And so, you know, you learn that. I mean, there's definitely that in Chicago and any major city. You know, you have that, that racial divide or whatever you want to call it. But 
Um, there's going to be a lot of turmoil that anyone will have to go through in life. If you're short, if you're tall, if you're a woman, if you're you know fat, you know, or skinny, yeah. you know, whatever it is, light skin, dark skin, whatever it is, everyone is going to have some kind of challenge they have to get over. And it's the, the mature ones that know how to handle it right, that don't get uh, beaten up by their circumstances. They actually utilize them to strengthen their character, the content of their character. So again, it goes back to, you know, we were raised right. The foundation was right. Okay. And so it builds character. And that foundation in Christ, you know, is, is the best foundation that any man can have because that's, you know, he's our savior, he's our Lord, and, and he gives us strength in, in all that we do. So man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And, and I try to do that today and teach that to my children. Yeah. So back in those days then, so when you have the, you, you mentioned sort of racism back back as a kid, but you're also you, you, a strong Bible family. Which one was more challenging, having friends to say, come on, you're going to church again, or so the, 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 any of the racism that you might have experienced as a teenager, going back as a teenager? Then? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think any, I, my, when I look at my childhood, I don't, it's not negative. I mean, it's just, again, it's like, oh, this, this is what I had to deal with on certain cases, but most of the time it's been positive. So I never even let any of that rush by me. It never, mm. I mean, because again, when you're coming from a good place, you have a good home, good family, almost I felt guilty sometimes because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of children, I mean, for real, I mean, it, at one point I was like, man, all these kids always complain about their parents or this, whatever. Yeah. I was like, man, we got a good So I kind of <laughs> didn't want to talk or say anything because I don't want them to feel, you know, and so, no, I mean, you're going to deal with that. So I didn't, you know, we, the gangs didn't deal with us. They didn't mess with, they actually respected us. I mean, they respected that we were trying to do something. We're trying to, you know, so it wasn't mm-hmm. the, you know, we were the Beverly boys. We were still <laughs> the Beverly boys. And so we had a brand and identity and we had a, you know, a certain respect level in our neighborhood. You know, we were the Beverly's from Beverly and we carried ourselves that way. And people, you ask, you know, any of any of them that grew up with us, they don't know, hey, no, the Beverly's are, you know, they're positive people. They're real, don't mess with them. Mm-hmm. They're about something. Uh, they're gonna be somebody. And that's how we care ourselves, and that's how oh. we still care ourselves. And so when you when you do that, you you actually impact them instead yeah. of letting your circumstances impact you. Yeah. So we've impacted our our neighborhood, our community, and that's what a good Christian should do, is you should be the impact, you should be the shining light. You, know, you should be that one vessel that stands out. I mean, I look at some of the Bible stories and it's like, why did God tell us of this one person? Why did he name this person and then tell us their story? Because they stand out. And there's something about their character that when, when, when uh, challenged, they didn't cave. You know, and so that's the thing. It's like, yeah, we're going to face challenges, but challenges don't define me. I mean, I'm, we're all a challenge, so it's nothing mm. unique, but I don't cave under challenges. Actually, I look at them as welcoming opportunities to, to teach, to learn, to grow, and it usually, you know, uh, I, I look at now more of as, as a teaching opportunity because those that are doing the challenge really need to learn mm. this, this self-hate that they have going on and, and those kind of things, and, and if they would listen they might be able to learn something. I'm, and I'm, I'm in a position of just helping people right now. And that's all I'm trying to do. You know, mm-hmm. obviously helping my family first, but, you know, helping others as well. Mm-hmm. And God is blessing. So I'm not, I'm not, not you know, none of these, you know, COVID, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, anything, you yeah. know, you had a foundation of the Lord, you're good. You're I think good. the one, the one thing that, I, that I'm picking up um, is a consistency about your parents um, in a, in a time when, you know, whether it's in the 70s or 80s or whatnot. I mean, I think during my sort of time in the States, I, I recognized the power and importance of a strong black parent, both father and mother. And I think that's the a massive blessing that you had, but not just having both of them, but having them really consistent with boundaries and, and giving you guys sort of that sense of a purpose. How, where did you, I mean, for your dad's side, I mean, where, where was he also born and raised in, in, in Chicago or did he come from the South or what was his story? Um, 
I think mainly born and raised in, because a lot of our families in like Detroit, they were guess some business. Um, yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, most of his family is in Detroit, but I'm trying to remember if they moved there. I think they moved there from Chicago. I think he was born and raised in Chicago, yeah, because I know they went to high school, I think. Dunbar, and uh, I'm trying to remember about the history, but I think <laughs> it's born and raised in Chicago. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, they they got a lot of history. They, you know, they didn't have it as easy as, as we did in terms of, you know, the, the one home. And that's why he wanted to, to give us what we, what he didn't have. Um, mm-hmm. The, the fat, the, the du- dual parents at home. Um, you know, I think the parents were separated and, and uh, even on my mother's side, the same kind of situation. So they wanted to give, you know, better than what they had. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do and with my children, give them better than what I had. Mm. Um, but also not, uh, you know, not just give it to you, you got to earn it. So we yeah. learned to work. Like I said, my first job was a paper route. I mean, I took my bike and I put a little basket on it, I had my papers <laughs> on it. I went around and did my route you know until people had cars and they took us over so i learned that i was like man i can't do the paper out anymore because now the cars you know the guys with the cars are getting my route you know so you learn tribulation in life so you know so i think yeah they you know i mean you know chicago any city you know has its rough sides and i think they kind of grew up in some of the rough areas and they realized you know what no, i want to i want to live in beverly hills i want to raise my family there i want to be in a home where they can be and so we were, you know, fortunate of that because we had good parents that did that. And if you have children, you should want your children to have a better life and upbringing than you did. And yeah. you should provide for them. And that's what I'm trying to do for mine. Yeah. So then growing up in Chicago, what happened after? Where did you go to college? Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, before college, I mean, we went to a Morgan Park High School, you know, in Pee High, uh, Mustangs, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we had, you know, it's a you know, pretty prestigious public school. I don't know public schools back then. I don't know about today. My country is a home school, so, you know. But, um, uh, and, um, you know, played all the sports there and did, did all the kind of things, made friends and stuff like that, but stayed out of trouble. Uh, never got into gang life and all that kind of stuff. Again, like I said, they respected us because we were athletes, we were educated, and we were doing something. So. See, they, they pry, the, the gangs pry on the weak, and mm. the strong people don't join the gangs. So, you know, if you're, if you're part of a gang, you're weak-minded. Mm. When you're strong and, and you're independent, and I've always been independent, even though I'm a team player and I'm from the middle child, I've always worked with my, but I've always been independent because, uh, you know, that's just what God has created in the way the Spirit of the Lord is, that's liberty. Then, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't really have the help to recruit myself to college. And so, you know, I was actually the first one to go to college. My older brother went to the Marines, the military. And my parents never uh, really, my, my father went to seminary, which is uh, college, but um, he never went to a secular college. Um, mm. And so I was the first one in the home to go to college. So no one really knew how to even go apply or anything like that, or even for sports. So I had to earn my way. I, I ended up earning a scholarship um, to to uh, play football and baseball, but uh, I, I canceled that scholarship and, and to, chose to walk on a Division One school as a Division Two school. And I, a lot of my other uh, players were going there, and I said, you know, what, I want to go to one that's a little bit closer to home. And um, you know, I went on a school trip, and I chose that decision, and, and I walked on, and I earned my scholarship. So I've always been a self-made man in that sense. So can you explain, and um, I can went you to Illinois State University. Yeah. So can you explain what that means? The, um, um, the, the I, know, I know about the, the sort of scholarships, but what's the walking on that you chose? And what, 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 what exactly was that? Well, generally, you know, you have to, you, you get recruited um, by the colleges and they, they send you offer letters and, and then they want, they give you, you know, a stipend or something or a full scholarship, partial scholarship. Yeah. for for you to go to that school and play sports there and because you know i didn't know anything about it i didn't have you know i had to create my own demo reel and for you know i had all the stats and all of the stuff but you got to still market yourself to, i didn't know anything okay. about that i didn't even know about applying to colleges and all that kind of stuff and you know the sat and act and all that stuff so you know i'm learning all this on the whim but um so i was kind of late in my recruiting effort even though i you know made the papers and I did all of this kind of stuff and uh, actually I was you know recruited by the White Sox to play for them and I, I didn't want to play I wanted to go to college and so um, 
I end up, like I said, the, the Division II schools and, you know, some of the lower end Division I schools were interested, but I really wanted to go to Illinois State University, uh, be a Redbird. And so I, I was too late to, to be in their program for a scholarship, but they offered and said, you know what, we like you, you can come in and walk on if you confident in your talent, you can earn one. And so I did that. Um, and, and so I just chose to pass up on it. And I had to, actually, I even accepted an offer letter and I had to tell the coach and I said, you know what, I apologize, I, you know, I accept it, but I've got to change my mind because my heart is taking me here. And, and, and I remember that he didn't, uh, you know, try to make me feel bad or begrudge me about it. He said, you know what, you know, you're making a decision for your life. And mm -hmm. that's part of being a man and what you learn to do. And so I respected that. And so I wanted to make certain I made that that count, so I had to make that team in my mind because I had to, uh, you know, I'm going there and I'm passing up all, you know, things. And I probably would have had better offers had I, you know, had I did did it right, and I wouldn't have to do it. But these are the things I'm learning. So my children, they're going to have those things because now I know, you know, and my parents didn't know, you know, we were just, you know, just uh, just making it happen. So. It, it's have, totally different then. You didn't have internet. You didn't have okay. you know, all this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Back then, like I said, I had VD disc tapes I was putting together, and I <laughs> chopped together my own little highlight reel. I'll be called. You get this highlight? So I didn't even have all my highlights. I just had whatever I could. You know. Wow. So, you know, you I remember, it? man. Like I said, man. You just you have a drive, man. You gotta make it happen. You gotta make it happen. That's it, man. Did you ever think you'd go pro? Was that ever the, the dream, or did you? Oh yeah, people used to say that all the time. And if I probably had to write, I could have went. I mean, I chose not to. Um, like I said, I could have went to the Sox or the baseball, and then um, I had you know try out with um, the Bears and also um, some indoor leagues and stuff like that. So I could have, but I you know I chose. You know what? My body was tired after college. I was like, you know what? Let me just <laughs> go into this. Through. And then that was an even journey, man. I mean, uh, you know, I played ball for five years. I did a red shirt my freshman year, and I played ball for five years. And then you know, I was ready to graduate. I'm thinking, like, man, I don't have a job lined up. And that's when I found Carol Tech and Tech Systems. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so because I had a, a friend in my class, and uh, she, um, she had just got hired by them out of Chicago. And I went to one in Bloomington. And... Um, and uh, I interviewed with them and, you know, they seen, I brought in my own little, I carried my own little uh, card, my business card. They, you know, they, they like to, they just like to go get her in the uh, Yeah, 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 that, that would work. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I got the interview and, and uh, they told me, say, which office would you like to go in, in Chicago or in our new office that we started in Bloomington? Well, you know me, I'm a go get I'm like, I, I'll do the one here. You know, I'll do the one here. I didn't want, I wanted to do office. I want to make the name for myself. I did that, you know. We did good, and that's how I got promoted to come out to California. And that's where you and I met, you know. So yeah. So well, how was that leaving though? Life. How was that leaving your family? Because I know you're close to your, your brother. I know your, your older brother moved to Japan uh, with the Marines, but then leaving mom, dad, and your, your younger brother had you, had he moved to? Was that tough for you, or was that like, yeah, I'll just go? And for my own career, like Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, once you're your own man, you can't be in your father's house. I can't go back to college and go back to home. I'm like, nah, that's cool. You know, you know, can't be too many chefs in the kitchen. So it was an easy decision for me to decide in terms of, uh, you know, making that move. Um, it was just that, you know, again, unknown territory. I've never been, a, you know, I've been in California just to visit, but I never met the liver or been there any long time so you know that was a challenge it was a lot it took a lot of prayer you know and, and those kind of things and so you know not knowing anybody and it's a whole different culture shock you know from midwest to the west coast and stuff like that so you know that's why i'm saying when meeting uh, brothers like you helped me to make that transition you know much easier and just even understand i never even really did sales per se you know mm -hmm. I, we were selling it at the at the recruiter level but you know now you you know mandated to our right, you got to bring in this book of business and this kind of stuff and so it's a little bit different you know yeah. so you were learning you were learning me to rope on that and you know and so I, we you know so no it was it was good I but I do want to say something, and you know, and you attest to it, and you know that's the reason why. I'm glad we're here. Okay. You know that I work my butt off, 
they gave me a small little territory, right? They gave me a little territory that I could actually share with another scene producer. So it was like, but in that territory was a, a diamond in the rough and they didn't think I was going to get it. And I got, and by the grace of God, I got direct TV and I, uh, and they had like three layers of a, of a vendor list. We, I bypassed all of those layers and got my guy in there. And they, <laughs> It was the first account, the first time ever working at DirecTV. And to this day, DirecTV is their largest company, their largest client for the wow. tech system. Yeah. And okay. it's thankful to me that I got it. And that's the reason why I got booted out. And you know you were in that sales <laughs> meeting with those other guys. Yeah. They booted me out of there because they wanted that account. But I, mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. I didn't know anything about how you know red tape of business works. You know, I'm just like, you know, I'm just yeah. going after But I don't have any hate towards anybody there or anything like that. I still yeah. remember, you know, Troy, Paul Peck, and Keith Gosh, and these guys that, you know, like yourself, that has had an influence in my life there. So, I mean, all the lessons I learned there, I even apply today, still in my in my business. It wasn't meant for me to yeah. be there I mean, a long time. It was meant for me to be there for that season. That way I can do what I'm doing now. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's amazing. We, we, we talk about what's happening, this awakening, Black Lives Matter. And one of the things that I noticed during that time was, Maybe because I was in an office where, and and I and I lived in in, in Redondo Beach, and I was, I, I you know I I was t- talking to talk. I was you know I, I came from England, Nigeria, so I was I didn't know that I didn't have that sort of baggage in history. So I was hanging out with the guys out in Rio R- R- yeah. and stuff. So moving across it, it was like, hey, these are my guys. What's going on? Hey, look after my little guy here. You know. I, 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 <laughs> So I could talk and I was flowing with them. Um, but the one thing I always, always remember is that when it came to, to customers, it was easy for me. I was like, yeah, let's say, uh, you yes. like it. But when it came to going down to the Century <laughs> Club, <laughs> <going down. laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, see, I was meant to you. Yeah, I was like, dude, man. You're on that side, which is probably not good for the mental. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, how do you start? You're like, yeah, let's go, what's going on with the drinks? And stuff. But I, you know, it was like, it was very strange how I, when it came to the cell side, it was almost like, yeah, yeah. Let's, okay, let's role play, no problem. <laughs> so it was that, I would always remember. <laughs> that is true, man. It was like, yeah, when you were like, when it comes to sales and business, you yeah. can talk to talk and came, and I was shy, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But when it came to talking to the ladies and whatever, yeah. you, <laughs> it was like, oh, I was like, man, you know, you, <laughs> you just did. You know, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> you're, 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 trying to yeah, mention you back on that. It was a little weird. Yeah, yeah. You remind me of <laughs> Will Smith and Hitch, you know, being able to talk to any other ladies and stuff. I was like, this guy's got a gold star and stuff. But okay, so we, we get to 2001, 2000 when, you know, dot com and, and they were like ruthless and like cutting people. For the, and this is a company that was growing and just hiring people without any, without any you know, just like, yep, come in, hire. They get to the, to the dot com bubble. And they become ruthless, and um, and I know it was a, it was a chance for you. It really hit me. But uh, you know, we've talked about being grown up and as a man of faith and stuff. How did you did did was your faith did it stand firm? Did, were you? I mean, it's a different thing. You you're in LA. You have to pay bills, and you know you've just been told that's it, no more. How 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 did you manage and handle that personally? The um, the 2000, well, it was more the, the layoff, you know, uh, but again, I'm always, you know, this, the scripture is walk by faith, not by sight. So what you're mm-hmm. saying is not re- reality. God has reality in his hand. He's in, in charge. But yeah, you take hits, you know, and, uh, but I'm just, you know, I'm thinking, and, you know, I'm thinking like, it was just cold how it all happened. It's like, wow, yeah. you know, they first wanted to demote me, then, they, mm-hmm. you know, they were looking for me to quit. Yeah. And I'm not a quit, but since I didn't quit, then they said, okay, all right, we've got, we've got to get, you know, get you the second layoff in company history with layoff. But hey, of course, they have to pay me a severance. So I was still winning. I mean, they paid me a nice severance package to leave. And, uh, but, you know, I had confidence in, in where the Lord is, but it's like, man, they, they promoted me to come out here to do this. And, and I, yeah, I even had offers to go back to Bloomington, and they were awesome for me to come back. But uh, I said, no, you know, I'm good. And I ended up getting another another job right away. I 
So I didn't know that was my first time ever even that was the first job out of college. So I didn't know how marketable I was. Mm-hmm. So I got a job right away. And the cool thing is about it, they laid me off the on my birthday, the week of my birthday. Mm-hmm. And uh but less than a month later I was back employed and my birthday's in November. So this was during the Christmas holiday when people aren't really you know, hiring because they yeah. you know, think, but hey, you know, I you know you know, I was that much employable. And then that same company, a year later, I got laid off from them too. So that was God telling me, like, look, okay, kid, you learn what you need to learn here. It's time for you to go do do what you really desire to do. Because we, you know, we had a um, landscaping business at the young age. And we, you know, like I said, we also were barbers. So we were entrepreneurs at heart. So I didn't have any children. I wasn't married. And it was like, you know what? I didn't have anything tying me down. It's like, look, you need to start that your business now. And so that's what, what made me do it. It's like, you know what, I can go back and keep doing this, you know, career thing and, you know, mm-hmm. do that kind of stuff where I can just make 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 my opportunity. You know, Paul was a tent maker, he was a businessman, Peter was mm-hmm. a fisherman. So they went out and made their money. They went out and did it. So and that's that's what I want to do. And so I set out to do it and we did it. And, yeah, you know, I mean i I can remember during those days when we were still working together and you know you talk about i mean i, I was always a it's always a, i was always um impressed because i'm close to my brothers but i was impressed about how much you would always talk about yeah let's do this beverly boys stuff and you, you know you get your brother we, we go tokyo we go miami we go la and you were always talking about that and it's quite easy that people can hear that and say, what's this guy talking about? But it, to me, I'm like, wow, this guy, that's, that's, you know, I could, I could see it because you believed it. So I could see what you were talking about. <laughs> um, it, and it's, that those are some things I feed off of when somebody has vision. It's just the most exuberating thing when somebody has vision and, and, and they can see stuff when it's not around. So when you were talking about that and your brothers and your, you bring, <laughs> and I remember when Marcus comes down from Miami and, you know, and he was like showing him around LA and stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, these guys are going to do this stuff. Um, <laughs> what, I mean, it was a walk in faith, but tell us about the early inceptions of um, Beverly Boys and, and how you just said, look, I'm going to walk by this faith that I've, you've had burning inside of you. Yeah, well, my brother and I, we, it was a Christmas break. We were just getting together and sitting at the get the table and just talking and on a piece of napkin we wrote down this vision and it was actually his vision he said beverly uh, enterprise we the beverly boys let's do beverly enterprises and the first part of the enterprises would be beverly boy productions I was like oh sounds good now, how are we going to do it <laughs> you, know, so, <laughs> you know i'm a practical guy i'm all about making it happen but yeah i mean it's definitely with his vision uh he's the he's an actor he came out uh, here to act for a while and yeah, he, yeah. He and uh he realized you know that's not the route to go you know if we're going to do it we got to be on the producer side not the talent side because it's you gonna get worked in this industry trying to do it that side you come out something that you're not that you didn't come in as so he's like you know what i don't want to do that but i'm gonna figure it out and he's my younger brother but he's always kind of you know looked to me to kind of help guide him on some stuff and i just he just I think he was running by me, and I was like, good. And so I gave him a thumbs up. He was like, okay. And uh, yeah, I was basically helping, sponsoring, investing in him to get started. That's why I was still working at a second job. Mm-hmm. And so the first year uh, was uh, me helping him get started. And even I even made some cold call and got his first accounts and stuff like that. So, And then when I get laid off, then it was my time to say, you know what, it's time for me to enter the family business. So, you know, he's the kind of the pioneer. We both pioneered it, but he's the one that kind of went out there on the field and helped make it happen and bring it to fruition. And once he kind of got on his feet, he's, you know, he's, he's running and he's doing great things, big things, you know. So now I'm trying to catch up to him now, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, yeah. so now we've always been partnered together in family. And that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, brothers working together literally and you know not bickering at each other and all that kind of stuff you know we, we visit we you know, have, you know love for one another pray for one another and that's what my parents always wanted you know we don't we're not you know none of our family is not talking to one another no we mm-hmm. talk to one another I, obviously everyone in family has issues and problems you know even even jesus you know uh family wasn't uh you know as loving to him as it should be so, you know, no one is without any, you know, family. But again, we don't let tribulation 
we have a higher calling, we have a higher purpose, you know, we got to make it happen, you know, because God has opened up this door. So, you know, like certain people, God, you know, they selected Moses. I mean, Moses started out as a baby in the water, you know, getting away from his wife, from his parents, you know, he was raised by, you know, but he was raised by some kings, you know, but not even his own parents. But I mean, you can go through go through scripture and just see who they picked. I mean, David was just a little child, and everybody, no one even looked at him. But they didn't know that he he conquered a lion with his bare hands, you know, mm -hmm. and and a bear, you know, as a child or to protect his his animal. But they didn't know him. They like you know they were like, oh, okay, well, you know, laughing at him, but he went against the lion and killed him. He, you know, he was wise, and so. I mean, just all throughout scripture, you just see those Daniel was just, just a servant, servant boy, but he stood up and, and uh, you know, he, 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 you know, he, he uh, was with the wise men. He was mm. actually wise above, above his years. Mm. And so, you know, they, King Nebuchadnezzar made him uh, second, or, second or third in command. Yeah, yeah. You know, Joseph, same thing. Joseph was turned away by his own brethren. Yeah. <laughs> left to die, you know. The, the, yeah, they had to coat him many colors, and they they love to kill him. And then he ended up being second in command, and now they can now his family come to worship him. Mm -hmm. So I look at the underdog and in, in the scriptures, and it's really the, the underdog is not really the underdog; it's the perception that they're the underdog. But they've always had in them mm -hmm. that uh, that what God is saw in them. That's why God has chosen them. And so he, he's always saw in them that content and the character of that never say God die, and you know we're gonna make it happen no matter what. Yeah. No circumstance that's going, to, that's going to stop me, and that's what you got to have in, in this life, in this world, to yeah. be successful. But then, so you, 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 did you decide when you moved to California that you're not moving back anywhere else, that this was going to be home, or was there ever a chance, like you know, what, it's getting to oh. where I might move back to sh Chicago, move yeah. to Miami, or change the city? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I've always been open to move wherever I want to, you know, I like, I live my life how I want to, but I choose to be here. So, you know, beautiful area. A lot of people love to be in California and the weather's great. Mm. Uh, it's expensive to be here, but you know, that means I just got to make more money. So, you know, but you know, I mean, I don't mind traveling, but you know, my wife wants to do more travel and stuff like that. And so just to see other places with the COVID thing is hard to do now, but yeah. Living other places, we've considered it. I mean, we still might even consider Look, it. But this is prior to, 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 to the family. I'm talking about early days of the of the company. So your brother's out in Miami. Oh, when I got uh, laid off, moved yeah, back. Well, no, you, yeah, you, like, yeah. Oh, I was like, no, I made I made a reason. I said, I came out here for a reason. It's, it may not be tech systems, but it's, uh, you know, if God brought me, see, I don't think, I don't think that, the, see, I've been guided by God, so I don't think that it's the company. I think that God opened up the door for the company to bring me out. It was fully paid for. I had to pay. I had to come out here. So it's like, basically, God moved me out here for a reason. See, I moved by God. I moved go by the purpose of God. So it wasn't a thought of I got to move back. The company let me go. So I was only out here for the company to say, no, 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 no. The company did its part. It was used to build me to where I needed to be. So that's how I've always looked at it. That's the yeah. thing. And then even the other gentleman, I worked for another gentleman. He he imparted a lot of. You know, I had one, it was a smaller company, so I had one-on-one -on -one with him, and I learned how to work and operate a business. So everything, I, it was my learning tool, so it yeah. was good. And once my job was done there, I graduated. That's all yeah. I lived in, it's a graduation, a promotion mm -hmm. for the next next uh, part of my life, and that's all it was, that's all it's been. So the um so you and your, and, and 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 Tobias oh, sorry Marcus I mean even Tobias out in, in in Japan and I remember you and that's that's the part of you that I was always um remember that you'd always reach out for your brother out in Japan like yeah you know he'll come back soon and, and he'll be part of the company even yeah. though he was you know he had a, yeah. he was Korean the military but he was like yeah he's gonna be back in and. It's, it's about all like the musketeers. We all have to be part of that <laughs> stuff. And, and and as I said, you, you know, you might look back, you might not realize that, but you had the vision. But you, it was because I'm as I said, I've got three younger brothers, and I'm very close to them. But seeing that in another person, especially you know, money, success, as you go, you can grow apart. But that was something that was the core. And and maybe as the middle child, you were almost like a glue, and you were like one hand with this yeah. brother, and one hand bringing this brother in. So this company starts, uh, and I remember, t <laughs> I, I remember telling you how you need to go trademark the company, go down to the, uh, downtown LA to register the company. 
because it becomes official <laughs> when you got the name and it's yeah. officially trademarked and so no one take it. And almost as it sounds like, well, this is really happening. <laughs> but then you took it off and it was like, wow, this guy's really doing this stuff. I mean, and I think for people who are looking to, to start their own stuff, what are the things that you started to do in order to say, okay, we've got this vision, we've got the, the will, but we actually have to make a reality. I mean, did, did, I mean, I mean, a, a lot of people decide to go get a big invest, a big loan to, to, to spend, but did you build slowly? Did you start finding open doors or what, what, what was the beginning like? Well, I think God has provided the investment for me with the, the with the, the, um, the layoff situation, uh, you know, I was able to have a, you know, um, like I said, some uh, funds there. And then also, um, you know, and also, you know, my brother's a little, little success. So that helped me to kind of have something to say, okay, they want to see samples of it. So this could be samples of what, what we could do as a company. So pull off of all of my resources in order to pull it together so um yeah but uh yeah i would yeah i mean i, I would say that uh you know yeah it's, i didn't have to uh you know maybe go the traditional route i don't even i still don't even know what the traditional route is it's just to me it's just you know what you make happen it all changes anyway you know so you try to I follow up someone else's success. That's their success. I, I never really, you can learn from people's success and those kind of things, but you gotta, you gotta trail, blaze your own trail. I've mm -hmm. always been my own trailblazer. So, yeah. So I never really kind of looked and saw or envied what somebody else was doing. You know, I appreciate it, but it's, you know, I think God has a certain, you know, tunnel vision. I think God's got a certain blessing for me and what I'm doing. And I said, you know, so I'm no hater over here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I congratulate you. You know, it's like yeah, you're doing great. That's awesome. And, mm. uh, but there's plenty of opportunity for for everyone out here. And if you start looking at other people and coveting what they have, you'll never see what God has got right in front of you. And yeah. so that's all. And, and your time is gonna come. Your time. You may want to have it now, but you got to be patient. You got to learn lessons to be learned. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for you, you know, it's to help others, you mm -hmm. know. So if it's, if it's, that's what my father always taught me. It's like, look, and you, you know, you're a leader. You got to teach other. I'm like, why you keep on saying, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. He's always trying to teach me not to be selfish and not, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, I want to, don't want to just say my father, you know, my mother as well. You know, both yeah. parents, they were there, you know, praying. For me. She actually exemplified my my father's a good preacher. She's a good example of the show, you know. And so she's always, you know, would call in the mornings and just, I'm just having a private, you know, session with the Lord and, you yeah, know, just <laughs> praying with them. And I do my studies and I thought about this. I want to share with you, you know, so <laughs> she's imparting those little nuggets of wisdom with, with me and I'm listening and, you know, so those kind of things. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's with family, you know, God created the family and he started mm -hmm. Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, and they had children. So, I mean, it, the families were God works. And, mm. and, and uh, we as men need to be men and mm. we need to be you know, leaders of the women that God has given to us. He, uh, Adam was the, the man to the wife that he gave. And then they had children. He should have been the father to the children that he gave them. So um, so I, 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 if you have all the stuff in place in the right place, then, then you have a good footing to do well. But even that, you know, even if you have a broken home, you can still you can still take what you have in a broken mm -hmm. home and work from that foundation. So the home is a foundation. The church always met in the home. And so the home is where the heart is, the home is where where the blessing is. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess this was this and so whatever home you got to get your home. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so this will actually help move to the the the, 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 the latter part, which is the one thing that just been consistent since I've known you over 20 years is, is your, your faith. And we start, started about how, how you were raised with your parents in Chicago uh, up to now. You're working and you work, you, you own in a business in LA um, entertainment industry, mm -hmm. and it has its own sort of set of laws and rules. Mm -hmm. And despite mm -hmm. that, um, 
I, I, you know, even when you send your emails, you've got scripture at the bottom. So I'm sure that you're consistent with your faith. How has that been yeah. working in the industry you are in? Yeah. Your faith against the, the morals and values of the of the people that you're working around. Yeah, I mean, God has seen me through all of this, so it's like, why would I, you know, why would I be ashamed of Him? Or He's always been my foundation, so why would I even hide the fact that He's real? You know, no, I mean, you, you, this is who I am, and this is who, this is how I got here, and this is who I believe in, and that's it. I mean, I mean, it's almost like, you know, why would you be ashamed of? Your wife or so no you show all, or your children no you show them all this is who you are this is who got it. so no it's not like a outside thing or a secret no no so no i'm i'm, I'm proud to be a believer in the lord jesus christ because he's real and mm. and it actually is a breath of fresh air to a lot of people in hollywood and say wow I mean, you're bold enough to do that, and they just come and want to talk and be like, man. So they're like, they feel at home already. Now the the doors, are, you know, the, the guarded doors are, are open, and the, the wall is broken down, and now they can be themselves. You know, so many people are fake out here and unreal. And mm. you know, when I talk to people, you just talk real to them, and and uh, a lot of people appreciate it. Of course, you're gonna have haters. And Jesus was perfect. He never did anything bad. He healed people, he raised people from the dead, he fed the sick, and he still had haters. The Pharisees, mm. the Sadducees, the lawyers, the, the scribes, they hated on him. Mm. It was the leaders that hated him, not the people, mm. either, or not the, not, you know, not the normal people that aren't leading. The leaders hated him because, see, this world system is against Jesus' world system. And so mm. if there's going to be any hate, it would be from leadership, uh, not from normal people, you know, the people that aren't trying to, uh, you know, have an agenda. And so I'm, you know, I work with Hollywood. I don't work in Hollywood. I tell people that all the time. You know, Jesus was amongst, you know, sinners, you know, and he ate with them. And then you have people like, oh, he's, a, you know, he's a, a wine babbler and a sinner. And so you're going, they said that about Jesus and he wasn't, but he hung with them. And so why would I change? I'm going to do the same thing you know that jesus didn't just hang with him and just throwing up drinks you don't know he's ministering to them and that's what i'm doing god put me here for a purpose because this ministry needs to be done here and mm. uh that's how it is you know so no i mean it's, it's a lot of work to do so join us and you know come on out here <laughs> you know yeah hollywood needs it you know but you know that's what it is but wherever you at god you got you know god needs you where you're at if you're a believer and, and um mm. You know, your King James Bible with you, you need to use that, put on that full armor of God, and that's what I do every day. So, you know, no, it, it, it was a, it was a nerve wracking thing to, 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 to think on the front end to say, man, do I compromise or do I just keep it consistent? And I was like, no, I just, you have to, I thought on it once and I was like, oh no, I'm just going to be me and whatever, <laughs> whatever it takes, it takes, it's just whatever yeah. it is. But you do it, if you do it at the beginning. Yeah. You, you, it's no challenge. It's if you wait and it's you set up a certain brand without Christ. Yeah. And now you try to change. That's what's the problem. They're like, well, but that's who. If that's who you are, that's yeah. who you are. And what helped me to kind of, you know, obviously my parents, but also what helped me to do that is when I was in college and I played football. My head coach came to me, you know, and he asked me to be the like the team chaplain. And I'm, oh. I'm like, whoa, you know, amongst my own peers. And so. You know, so you in college, and that's when you know people are usually you know living their best life or whatever you know in college <laughs> and stuff. It's like, but he's asking me to kind of help keep keep the team in order, you know, on the on a you know on a on a modest level and, and those kind of things and be the team chaplain. I was the one that was praying before the games and after the games and um, leading the team in in um, in actually studies. We call it the uh, upper room midweek studies. Mm. Um, even the coaches would come out and listen to, you know, to, to the little studies that we have. So mm. at that time, it kind of sh showed me how to be among my peers and still be me without compromising and putting mm. on the front because, oh, they don't want to hear about Jesus. But now, 
Now they're like, oh, that's, you know, that's kale haze. Let's not curse around here. Let's not smoke around here. Let's not do that. You know? So I was used to that. Remember, we would go out. We would go out uh, with, the, with the company, and they'd be like, oh, well, let's give him a 7-Up. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, as I said, I, 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 <laughs> so I was able to, to dabble in and out, so I was, still, I was still on the way. I was still half and half, so I was like, I could talk to you, but I was like, hey, guys, let's go. This week and come back tomorrow for him and stuff. <laughs> but you know, and, but I'm, and that's one of the main things I do admire about you because I do know that when I briefly worked at um, Edmonds Entertainment and I was really moving, trying to move in there, I, I could feel the pressure, and it wasn't as I couldn't handle it. I mean, it was. I mean, I've seen everybody. You know, you know Tracy Ellis Ross, Mike Tyson, Puffy. I've seen everybody. And I was like, wow, this is it. I'm, I've landed. I've got what I want to be. And I'll start my NISA entertainment. And I was like really into it. But then I, the people I was working with were trying to say, guys, we're, we're going to go on tour in a couple of months. And guess how we, you know, we get all the ladies and the groupies. And they were just, I mean, it was almost as if you've now, you know, for us to trust you, you've got to, we've got to put you in a position where, you can't come back and say this and this because that's what got, it is. We've got this on you, and and, yep. and I and I couldn't, and I think yeah. God knew I couldn't handle that. So that's I good. remember being at work one day, sitting down doing some work in in the building in in opposite the Capitol, the, the Tower, Re the, the Capitol Records building. That's where Edmonds was, and I could hear myself say, "God, save me!" And I felt like somebody had put a blanket over me and was trying to suffocate me. And I, I cried out, Lord, save me and stuff. I had no idea where that came from. Within a couple of weeks, I was out of the country. <laughs> you know, it was that quick. I mean, I, that, I left the country. Yeah, I remember it was quick. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't a plan. It wasn't like I planned to go. Yeah. It was like God saying, you can't, this is. I remember you, you were at LAX and they stopped you. And they, yeah. uh, they sent yeah, you right. back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't yeah, let you go. They wouldn't let me come. Yeah, and God says, you know, you they would kill you if I if I let you back. So I've got to keep you out. So, you know, you, you so you've been very consistent about your faith, and and I and I know that that's one of the reasons why. And he he's always said, I don't want you to go in and change Hollywood. I want you to be separate, and 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 people and you know, it's a you can't go in and Sodom and Gomorrah, they did not, Abraham didn't, he could have said, Abraham, go in, preach the word, let them change. They did for Nineveh, but he didn't do that for Sodom and Gomorrah. So there's a sense where people who wanted to be saved had to come out. So, but you've been very consistent in your faith and in your personality and everything that you're doing. So I can see how God can start using you to get people to say, you know, maybe we can stand firm and not compromise and be blessed. And, and, and that is something that it's wants to be admired for. And, and something that takes, a, you know, you need a lot of more prayer and intercession for that. But, you know, as we get to, as we towards get round up, and, yeah. and finish, and I definitely thank you, you know, give us an hour and stuff for this. So really thanks for blessing us with your little, with your history, but also I think one of the things that people would just pick up from this is the consistency of faith from parents and I, and I think it's probably something that other parents should start thinking about like you know how much we can invest in our kids at a young age that look at how they can then be very consistent when they get older and have their own kids and then you, you you train your kids and the kids then learn and pick up and stuff so and that's been something evidence from from what your mom and dad has done from from a young age from when you guys are young and how that's really influenced how you are not only doing it for your own kids but also you you know you're consistent with your business and stuff and so that's really a blessing and really great to, to see listen and hear so my word to anyone who's a who's of faith especially christian faith is that you what you're proving is that you can still stand firm with your faith and still be blessed and and still have conversations with people because you're not trying to insult them, but you're trying to be genuine and, and real to in, 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 in yourself. Yeah, so I really yeah. appreciate the time. I said, really, so it's been fascinating to, to hear. I mean, especially, as I said, it's been 20 years since, no, we, we met up in 20 years and stuff, but to listen and hear it and really, you know, really reflect on it and see how consistent and see how you've been blessed. It's been really a blessing and an honor and stuff.
Likewise, likewise. Good to see what you're doing in the your family. And I know we can catch up a little bit more outside of this, but good to hear from you. And that you, you, you know, I mean, you still have a platform where you're trying to just help impart wisdom and knowledge on people. And, you know, you've always been that. So that's uh, so you're consistent <laughs> in what you're doing too. So and I know you, you know, your brothers, both your brothers speak high. Or, yeah, you have three brothers, I'm sorry, but I know, yeah. you know, know two of them. Um, yeah. more closely and they both speak highly of you I mean and they're they're doing successful as well so and, and, uh, so I know your parents are proud of you as well so you kind of you know like minds think alike so you kind of have a similar kind of scenario as well but um, yeah before we wrap it up man I, you know I just always like to whenever I have an, uh, an audience or, or you know I want to give God the praise and I want to make certain that people are aware of that you know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, doesn't matter if you're in the UK or US or wherever, whosoever believeth in him. The key word, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I, I, I really, it's simple, and people try to make it hard. They want to, they want to work their way to, to the Father. But Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus is that way, and we must believe on him, and that's the only way that we can be saved for eternal life. And, you know, Jesus is the Son of God. He's the only begotten Son of God. Amen. But in him is the man, is, is, is uh, the, the Lord, he, Jesus, who is the Father. Um, and so God was with us, is what Emmanuel means. He's titled Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And he was with us in the man Christ Jesus. He came unto his own people. His own people rejected him. Uh, mm -hmm. The Jews said, crucify him, but let Barabbas free. And so... Jesus uh, died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was sinless. He didn't. He had no reason to be on the cross, but for our sakes. So he died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried, dead for three days. The man was dead. God, God raised him from the dead. And so I believe that he was seen risen by his witnesses, and that's how we're able to testify about that today. And that is the simple gospel that anyone, whosoever, can believe on and have eternal life. And that's why my passion is that, because if we die without Jesus, we have hell to deal with, literally. Mm. Actually, the lake of fire, which is um, even worse, because hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. And so I, don't, I wouldn't want that on my worst enemy. Mm. So more than making money, more than being successful, giving awards in this, I would rather get a reward from God than a award from man. I want people to really hear that gospel and, and believe that gospel. And so thank you for the platform to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah.